Okay, cool. Welcome, guys. So we decided to hop on a Zoom call and give you guys the basic fundamentals um, to guide you guys through this market because it is a pretty early market and it's pretty different from the stock market and Forex and all that stuff due to the fact that you have to be looking at several different things in order to be in order to be trading and investing in this market. So basically, Bitcoin, since it was the first cryptocurrency and it is the king, it has the highest market cap. What does this mean? It has a really big market cap. And to trade these odds, you need to be looking at the Bitcoin dominance. So let me screen share right here. Here we have Bitcoin dominance, how dominant Bitcoin is in the market so for example right now you can see it is reaching 70 percent it has been at the early stages it was at 98 percent 98 percent imagine that that was bitcoin and like the stable coins like for example tether the, the us coin all that stuff um here you can see since bitcoin is traded against the us dollar i like to look at this chart us dollar acronym is dxy so i have that as my top one i always look at that because whenever the dollar plummets bitcoin shoots up it's it's correlated like dollar goes up bitcoin goes down simple okay so then we have ethereum we have ethereum it is let's go here to coin gecko i search up all my tokens in coin gecko here we can see ethereum being the second most valuable token at the moment with a 69 million market cap. Why is it so valuable? Because one, you can make other tokens with it. You can make a full on project with it. That's why I think it's the prince waiting to dethrone the king, Bitcoin. Because at the end of the day, Bitcoin is, it's gonna be a stepping stone for people to get into crypto. Most people know what Bitcoin is. They don't know Ethereum. They don't know XRP, Litecoin, Cardano, this and that. All right. So in the ETH ecosystem, we can find various layers. What these layers mean um, at a later date. So the reality with Bitcoin is, in my opinion, it's going to be a stepping stone. It's going to be a stepping stone for people to get into crypto because the transaction speeds, it's not that it's not that convenient. Sometimes you could be waiting for a Bitcoin transfer for a couple hours. The most I've waited for a Bitcoin transaction was when I used Cash App for my Bitcoin and that was around half a day. So now there's tokens where you have thousands of transactions per second also, I wanted to go over the market cap and the prices. Let's share my screen here. Okay, so the market cap shows how valuable the token is. And this, this fluctuates also as with the price. Because the price is, it's relative. It's relative to um, pumpamentals. Pumpamentals is being how much the token may pump due to basic laws of like supply and demand, right? So for example, if a token has 100 tokens available and another one has 100,000, which one do you think is going to pump higher in a shorter amount of time? The one with 100, because there's more demand for it, right? So um, for example, Cardano, Cardano here, the pump mentals with Cardano, you would have to, they have, a, they have a lot of tokens, look at this. They have 45 billion tokens, 45 billion. That's a lot, that's a lot. And they don't, they haven't even put all of their tokens into circulation. That's the tokens that are not in circulation, most are rewarded to miners. Miners being the people, the computers that help solve cryptographic puzzles for the blockchain. We'll go more over that later. And yeah, it's, it's basically that. That's why 
That's why Cardano right now, the price is so low. It's so low, but the market cap is, is huge. So that's why, that's why you need to like, know the difference between the market cap and the price. Price, you can use that to trade, guide your trades with, but all that stuff. But the market cap is where you actually value the token. So you will see the market cap go in order, highest to lowest. And that's the default in most, in most of these, um, in all of them, really. Like, you don't really see any of these websites organizing their tokens by, by their price, no. Price is relative. Price is relative to supply and demand. Thank you, Tariq. Really appreciate, you know, all the information that you sent. You know, Merry Christmas Eve to everybody, bro. Like, I really appreciate everybody here, even though it's a few people, like we said. But at the end of the day, you know, we're growing, and this is going to be recorded so people can, can see this information. Now, I want to touch up upon a little bit more about market cap. But before I get into market cap, I want to get into the top three giants of cryptocurrency and give you guys a little bit of basic sauce, so nothing too intense, okay? So we have Bitcoin, we have Ethereum, and we have XRP. Tether is a stable coin, which doesn't move. It's, it's always 0 0.999 or $1 or a dollar and one cent, just so you can withdraw your money and have a stable currency within the cryptocurrency market, okay? So I'm not going to talk about Tether. Now, I want you guys to think about 1849 and the gold rush, okay? People literally went all the way to San Francisco, California, all the way out west risk their lives if you guys read thinking grow rich there's a story about a guy that was three feet away from gold that gave up and then the person that he sold the machinery to ended up becoming a multi-millionaire right because of the opportunity now why was the opportunity of gold so important number one gold obviously is a precious precious material right so what makes it so valuable besides the material, right? And besides the hardness and besides what it could be used for is the fact that it's limited, okay? Besides the problem that it's solving, besides the value that it's bringing to the market, right? Whether it could be jewelry. Dude, some people have gold in toilets, understand? Like it's a luxury to have gold and it can be used for different use cases. I'm not gonna get into that. But the fact that it's so limited and it's so valuable always pushes the price to go up. I want you guys to think about fiat currency as something that can be printed any second. We just printed billions of dollars for the stimulus check. There's nothing backing up the US dollar besides trust. Besides me trusting the government that this is gonna have value. Look at countries like Venezuela with the Venezuelan Bolivar is literally trash. They, they, they grab it and then they throw it, they dump it. They're literally using dash. So there's nothing backing up fiat and money is always changing. So let's take a look at Bitcoin. What distinguishes Bitcoin from every single cryptocurrency is the fact that it's the first crypto. Satoshi was the one that invented it, right? And the fact that it uses blockchain is the reason that it's been able to be untouched until today. So blockchain is an unhackable, untraceable computer programming technology, you know, algorithm, whatever, whatever it is that you want to call it, the system. It's virtual, right? It literally creates virtual blocks through a code that allows everybody to be able to see the transaction. So this is the best example. And guys, I'm going over this because this is a recorded Zoom and it's cool for the new people that don't understand why Bitcoin is what it is to see this, okay? So back to blockchain. Now I'll give you guys an example with a bank. Let's say right now I have Chase Bank and I wanna see the statements, right? Who has control of the statements? The bank, not me. So the bank can tell me, you know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna give you the statements until 30 to 60 days. Sorry, that's the rules. Or let's say you're, you're dealing with a, not, not a big bank, maybe like a local bank in the Bahamas. I have no idea. And let's say they don't want to provide you with the statements. They can go burn it and go out of business. And then guess what? You don't have any proof of anything. This has happened to people before because you're trusting the bank. Now with blockchain, this is, this is a block that's being created virtually that everybody can see okay, that cannot be erased and is confirmed by miners, like he was talking about. Literal people that, are com that, that have computer technology and power to approve transactions to make sure that they're legitimate from one peer to another peer internationally and globally without a middleman. And since 
the blockchain technology is untrackable and unhackable, there's no way we can take down Bitcoin. Bitcoin is not going anywhere. Can I'm, I'm like 99.9% .9 sure, okay? Because you can't guarantee anything in life. And I'm not here to guarantee anything. But what I'm going to tell you is that there's a 99.9% .9 chance we're not going back, okay? Like, th this, is, this is getting ridiculous. JP Morgan is endorsing crypto. JP Morgan of Chase Bank is saying that more and more people are going to use crypto. Look at Cash App. They're literally using Bitcoin. Do you think big companies partnered up to start using crypto as methods of payment? Elon Musk created Dogecoin. Like, do you guys not see where this is headed? It's literally the future. This whole COVID thing, I'm not even going to get into too much details, but let's look at the facts. This whole COVID thing is what? It's pushing online transactions, Amazon pumps, Tesla's pumping, technology's pumping, online stores are pumping. They're encouraging. I'm sorry to interrupt you, bro. My bad. No, I was just saying cashless society. Yeah, I went to Aldi's the other day and said we're not accepting cash. So we got to see where life is heading. So knowing that Bitcoin has only a, a complete supply of 21 million Bitcoins is insane. Is insane because that's too little. That's way too little. 21 million. The, the Fed just printed hundreds of billions of dollars like nothing. So once you understand that concept that Bitcoin is digital gold and there's no going back, that's when people start making money. So when you're looking at Bitcoin, I want everybody to look at Bitcoin as a stable crypto that's a really, really good hedge against inflation, okay? Really good hedge against inflation. A lot of investors like Paul Tudor Jones, not sure if you guys are familiar with who he is. He's a big time hedge inf um, investor. I'm not too sure if he's the top one in the whole world, but he's up there. So this guy knows exactly what he's talking about. Um, says that Bitcoin is a great hedge against inflation. So let's say Bitcoin right now is 22,000. I'm looking um, for Bitcoin to hit 100K. That's my long-term goal. Maybe I wouldn't even be surprised if it hit 250 or even 500K in the next four to six years. I would not be surprised. And we just went through a halving, which means that Bitcoin founders or creators or Satoshi is really unknown, cuts the supply, right? So now that we understand that Bitcoin is digital gold and your job is just to get as much as you can of Bitcoin, now we can move on to Ethereum. Now, to talk about market cap, market cap is present in stocks as well. So what it means is the, the value of the company or value of the coin, because there are some cryptocurrencies, for example, XRP, the company is Ripple, but the token is XRP. So they're a company and they're also a cryptocurrency at the same time. So we're kind of dealing with stocks and Forex at the same time. We're dealing with currencies and we're dealing with, with companies. So that's why a lot of stock traders do amazing with cryptocurrency because they understand how the market works. So going back to market cap, market cap, it just looks at the amount of circulating supply that the, that the currency is presented, that the currency presents the people with and the amount of people that are buying. So the more people that are buying the amount of circu the circulating supply, the higher the market cap goes. All you need to know about market cap, you can do more research. Remember, this is just a basic call, is that this shows the value of the, the cryptocurrency project slash company slash blockchain slash whatever it is that we're looking at at the moment. So we look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin, Tariq, correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't know everything. And I'm still a student that's learning. Bitcoin was created in 2008, correct? I can Google this right now, but. Yes. Around 2008, yeah, 2008, and, and yeah. basically goes into 2012 when this guy goes blows it up. Okay, 2008. So this this market is fairly new. Okay, so going back to market cap, right now Bitcoin's market cap is 427 billion dollars. There there come there are companies in Nasdaq that aren't even worth that much. 400. It's about it's half a trillion almost, and we're still in the beginning stages. Cryptocurrency is projected to hit a total market cap of quadrillion. Not a trillion. So there's billion, trillion, quadrillion. I learned isn't that the other uh, day thanks to crypto. You know what I mean? Isn't the world economy a two trillion market capital? Like the, the, uh, the stock 
at least stock market without crypto. Isn't it two trillion if I'm not correct? Who, who is that asking, Danny? Yeah, Danny. Cool, Danny. Great question, bro. So the forex market, just so you know, the world currency market is about yeah. six point six trillion dollars. Let's say from five to six because it updates every yeah, day. Yeah, right? five to six. Five to six. Think Bitcoin, something that hasn't been out for not even ten years, is already you know getting up there to that big boy status. And we still have, let's say, like you said, four to six years for a lot of growth. So there's no losing with this in the end. So let me ask you a question, Danny. So you know how people became millionaires through Apple? Yeah. In 1990 or whatever, in the mid-1990s. Yeah, people yeah. are still making money off Apple today. Of course. It's insane. The bro. money is there. You just need to know how to get it. 100%, bro. But so yeah, you can continue, that, man. I appreciate this very much. Of course, bro. Um, so yeah, back to market cap. I'm not gonna get in too much detail. As I said, this is just you know the first Zoom call. Going back to Ethereum, Ethereum created a different blockchain. Not gonna get in too much detail. It just improves everything that Bitcoin doesn't do, like smart contracts, um, being able to confirm um, transactions a little bit more secure. Um, and we can get into that in a later date because um, I want to touch different um, topics about this. But a lot of different projects are building on, on Ethereum because of their blockchain. They're using their blockchain technology. So any, every single um, project that utilizes blockchain has a little blockchain that is a little bit different. Not every single one because every single um, crypto has a different purpose. So it might use similar blockchains. But Ethereum's blockchain is definitely one that completely changed the game. We'll talk about that another day. XRP, I want to talk about the SEC suing XRP. So a lot of people are worried, um, which I, you know, I can see why people would get worried. At the end of the day, if you guys saw the videos, what XRP is doing, it's a global bridge. So it's just helping our banks survive in this ecosystem. So Bitcoin is completely diminishing the bank. Bitcoin is saying, screw the banks. Let's do peer-to-peer -peer transactions. Let's take control over our money and let's, you know, do our thing right? Forget the government. XRP <clears throat> said, hold up, hold up. Let's use the cryptocurrency technology to our advantage. And let's also bring the banks into this because dude, the, if the banks are going to be eliminated, don't you think the banks are going to start suing? The banks are going to start, banks are, are going to have a problem within this space. You know, they're not going to go away. So XRP comes and solves that problem. So like I was telling Tariq yesterday, let's say a country in Africa, man, let's say Zimbabwe, I always use that example. It's probably a great country. You know, I don't know too much about it. But let's say Zimbabwe needs $100 million right now for malaria relief. And they're asking the, the Egyptian government to send the money, even though they're not even in a position to send the money. I don't know why I use that country. But with XRP and Ripple, the XRP is the token, Ripple is the company. They're going to be able to send a transaction instantaneously while the traditional banking system takes about five days, 10 days, sometimes months. Imagine how terrible that would be in a crisis. People need the money now, right? That can solve a lot of problems. That can solve famines. And there's a lot of other things that XRP does, but that's the main thing. So as you guys saw in the video, 95% of the transactions of XRP are international. Now the SEC is suing. Now understand the owners of Ripple own, I would say, not a majority, but almost up to 50% of the supply. Am I right, Tariq, about that number? Is it around 50%? A bit more. A bit more? Yeah. It's, it's up there. So I think to say 50% is, is pretty conservative. So let, let's leave it at that. They own a decent, a decent portion of XRP. So the owners know that when they dump the price down, they're going to be making a lot more money. So they can use that money, that same money, to reinvest into their project as well. So I've seen Ripple get sued before. They beat the law, the lawsuit. Um, they have enough money to pay off this lawsuit. They have no problem. If, it, if it's going to come down to a fee, they're, they're going to pay it off. They're going to pay that off. So that, that's not going to be an issue. And let's say the SEC um, does you know, go ahead and pursue this case and whatever the case may be. And let's say they get completely out of the U.S. They can operate internationally. But I doubt that's going to happen. We have, we, we, um, they hired somebody in the SEC that is for crypto. 
And at the end of the day, if you guys are aware, everything is scripted, you know, when it comes to the financial markets, you, you know, there's market manipulation. People already know where prices are going to go. These people are elites. They're elites. They have a lot of money. They have a lot of power. So they control the price. So when, I, when people own 50% of a currency, they're going to start manipulating the price. So as far as XRP, I, I definitely believe in this project. They're not going to go anywhere. Okay. Now, what I would do is diversify. I, I would not put all my, my money into XRP because, like I said, they can drop the price down to 13 tomorrow if they wanted to. Are, are you guys willing to hold that long? Now, you guys are willing to hold that long and dollar cost average in. You guys are going to make the most money because in 2017, we're in the last bull run, outperformed the whole market in ROI. Think about it. XRP right now is 27 cents. It's more than likely going, going to hit a dollar, okay? So I had to just put my camera off for a second. So XRP is more than likely to hit a dollar. So from 25 cents to a dollar, that's literally a 4X return. For Bitcoin to, to make a 4X return, it would have to hit $80,000. XRP literally almost hit a dollar, what, like three weeks ago? Almost like 90 cents on Coinbase. And... I'm, and the all-time high of XRP is $3.84. Now, a lot of huge investors are saying that XRP is going to hit $10. So if you're looking for a really, really big ROI, I would definitely start dollar cost averaging into XRP. Um, obviously, do as, as you guys wish. But it's, it's definitely something, something that I would look at and, and do a lot more research. Um, one more thing that I want to go get into is take profits, okay? So a lot of people you know, experienced the bull run this month of, for example, XRP hitting almost 90 cents, right? They didn't know when to take profit. So you got to have a rule for yourself depending on how much money you have. So let's say you have $1,000 and you have a rule that every time my coin is up 20%, I'm going to go ahead and sell 5% profit. And then out of those 2.5, I'm going to pay myself. And out of those 2.5, I'm going to save in USD or in Tether and reinvest into the market when it goes down. So the rest of the 15% is still in the market giving you an ROI. Now, anytime that you see a huge bullish candle, let's say on the daily or the weekly, that you just see a boom. For example, Bitcoin went from 17,000 or whatever. I remember I was dollar cost averaging at four or five, but let's say 17,000 all the way to 24, you might want to take profit. It broke all time highs. It's creating a new resistance at 23, 22, 24,000. Why not take away 75% profit, leave 25% and dollar cost average again when it retests 20 to 17,000? You're going to have a lot more money to play with and a lot more coins. And not, you know, not to forget that if you're dollar cost averaging at four to $6,000, you've been making money. The key is to always dollar cost average and to dollar cost average out. So just have a plan depending on your money. I don't know how much you guys make in your income. I don't know how much you guys make weekly, but definitely focus on, on having an income to invest. So some people make a thousand a week, some people make 2000 a week, some people make $10,000 a week. So the people that are making $10,000 a week through whatever it is that they're doing are taking a lot higher profits and our dollar cost, cost averaging a lot more. So obviously that's, that's pretty simple. The last thing I would say is psychology. The best thing that I can tell you to have good psychology in this market is to have an abundance mindset, number one. So how are you going to have an abundance mindset? Very simple. Have money in the bank. Have money in your acorns. Have money stored for an emergency fund. Have money in stocks. Keep on, keep on every single week putting in money into that. Because when you have all your money in crypto, you guys are going to be scared. You guys are going to be emotional. You guys are always going to be looking at the charts. But instead of just maybe investing a certain percentage of your income, you're going to be a lot more calm. And let's say, because guys, we're investors at the end of the day. I'm not Nostradamus. I'm, I'm just a regular person. We don't know if crypto is just going to go away and disappear. That's always a possibility. You guys have always, you always have to think about that. There are always companies that go out of business. There are network marketing companies that go out of business. So for me to say that crypto is here to stay 100%, you know, that's, that's a lie on my end because I don't know. So that's why you have to have your eggs in a different basket. So if worse comes to worse and shit hits the fan, you know, you guys are good. But if you guys know what you're doing and you guys are calm and, and you're motionless and you're reading the charts, which we'll get into later, I don't want to over confuse you guys. 
You guys are going to be smooth sailing, man. You guys aren't going to be worried. You're not going to be looking. I, I don't even check my Binance. I have some brokers that I don't even check. For example, I have VeChain. Like, I have a broker with VeChain. I don't even look because I'm planning to sell VeChain at $1. It's literally a cent and a half, maybe a little bit more. A cent, six, you know, something like that. So have money aside. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Have a healthy portfolio. And when you guys want to choose a crypto, you guys want to look for a few things, okay? I'm not going to get in detail. It's pretty self-explanatory, but we're going to be dropping value in the chat. So you guys are going to know about this. So a few things that I look for when it comes to a crypto. So you guys don't feel that you're putting your money at risk. So you can go to sleep at night is I look at adoption, what companies are adopting them, what companies are using these cryptos, utilization, how are people using it? Are people like you and me using um, these currencies? Market cap, which we went over, volume and liquidity. You know, how much money is, is being, um, how many transactions are happening on day-to-day basis? Partnerships, what companies are partnering up? What problem is it solving? And how is it solving it? What competition does it have? How is it different from, from, from another project? The history, when was it created? Why was it created? What, what has happened? Has it been sued by the SEC before? The, you know, the history, developers. You guys really want to look at the developers and the owners of these projects. For example, Algorand, an amazing blockchain, right, that a lot of people are utilizing. The, one of the developers is from MIT, and I did a lot of research about him. The guy's a genius, man. The guy's an absolute genius, so I trust him. Social presence, what do people think about it? You know, this is definitely this definitely helped me understand, you know, the whole thing with XRP a little bit more. To be honest with you, bro, like uh, I think it was like maybe two days. Yeah, two days ago. Buddy of mine hits me up. He's like, yo, you know, are you still investing in XRP? I'm like, yeah, bro. What's up? He's like, oh, uh, the SEC is suing it. I'm pulling out completely, bro. Immediately. My thought process was this is just probably another freaking scheme to make to scare yeah. people and have all these big institutions swoop in and buy all the extra people. Maybe I'm wrong, bro. You know, obviously there's always a possibility for that, but I've I've just noticed it's a repetitive pattern, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people pulled out of the stock market when the coronavirus hit. It was obviously a good move since it did crash, but a mm -hmm. lot of people stayed away from it. And I know a lot of people that profited big time off of the crash through the coronavirus back in March. So True. what I should have done, to be honest with you, is I should have, I should have pulled out of XRP and mm -hmm. just bought more now. You get me? What I've been mm -hmm. doing this whole time is I've been dollar cost averaging. So every week as it goes lower, I keep buying more and more and more and more. Um, but honestly speaking, bro, I mean... You know, I've learned or at least I've, I've I've sort of learned to part ways with whatever money I invest into any market. So the couple grand that I put into XRP, bro, if it goes to shit, it goes to shit, man. But if it does blow up like people say it will and I have faith that it will, then I'm going to be the one having the last laugh, you know, especially on all the people calling me stupid for holding on to it. So let me ask you, Yasiel, before you, you go on. Um you, you just heard everything that I go over before picking a crypto, right? You remember the last thing that I went over right now, like about why to pick a crypto? No. Okay. So you didn't hear, did you get the part when I was talking about adoption, utilization, market cap, value, partnerships, problem solution, competition, history, development, and social presence? No, brother. No problem. So I just said it right now. So I'm going to say it again. Don't worry. But actually, just look at the, at the recording. Because I, you know, I wouldn't want to repeat the same thing over and over for people that are. Oh watching yeah, no, dude, of course, of course. Yeah, but I'll say it one more time: adoption, utilization, market cap, volume, liquidity, partnerships, problem solution, competition. How is it different from other cryptos? History, age, duration, long-term vision, developers, and social presence. So before you get into crypto, research all of those topics. Because yes, yo, you need to sell yourself on the crypto. You need to be sold. Like I'm sold on XRP. I don't need <clears> anybody <throat> to buy XRP. You know what I mean? Gotcha. So you got to put the faith and that confidence so that when you're dollar cost averaging, you're not scared and you're not saying, oh, like if it goes to shit, like, you know, I'm fully confident in XRP that it's not going to go to shit. So I'm sleeping happy at night because I've done my research. Does that make sense? I got you. So you can have a little bit more peace of mind. I wouldn't want you to think like that. Because if you think like that, I'm not saying you are, I'm not saying that you are thinking like that. When I say you, I mean in general, right? When, yeah. when people think that, oh, it might go to shit, like that that's a red flag to me i wouldn't invest into that company 
If I have a feeling that's going to go to shit, I'm probably going to have a scarcity mindset and I'm going to be operating emotionally. But if you educate yourself on everything that I said, right, you're going to be way more calm, cool, collected, dollar cost averaging without even, you know, being worried about anything. Just keep up to date with the news and everything. And like I said, invest into Bitcoin, into Ethereum, into different projects. So you have a healthy portfolio. So when you're XRP, not putting all your eggs in one basket. Exactly. So when XRP is dumping, let's say it dumps to 20 cents, but you have you have Bitcoin pumping, right? You, you're you're compensating. You have a healthy portfolio. You're not Correct. too worried. About that. Correct. Yeah. Essentially, if you're not doing your research, you're just you're just gambling. You're pretty much going to be a little bit scared. And I used to be like that. I used to not like go off the hype. And I'll be like, dude, like, should I buy? I don't know, dude. Oh, man, like, this might go down. Like, I didn't know. I just didn't know. Once, dude, like, I've watched so many videos on XRP. I don't know everything about XRP. Dude, like, every time I watch a video, I learn something new. But every time I watch it, I rewatch it, and I get sold again. I get sold again. I'm like, all right, this is perfect. All right, cool. I'm not worried anymore. All right, this makes a lot of sense. You know, it's happening right now. So it's just that's the way it's got to be, bro. No, that's that's the whole purpose of me joining this this video and you know just talking to you the other day and and trying to gain your. I've also like I I, I messaged uh, Crypto Wizard on Instagram. You know, mm -hmm. I asked for his thoughts on the whole thing, and he just told me, dude, I'm just loading up even more. You know, I still. I still, uh, obviously Vince is one of my boys and he's, you know, he's still in IML and, you know, he sent me screenshots of what Nick Gomez was saying the other day and Nick mm -hmm. Gomez loaded up too, you know? So I'm just, cool. again, I'm just, I'm just trying to look for the people that I believe have good information on it. Um, and I think it's, even though I wasn't able to listen to the whole thing, I will be definitely rewatching this. And I want you to know that I'm very thankful for the information that you've shared, bro. Of course, man. Yeah, definitely, definitely, you know, rewatch it, take some notes because we i you know we spoke a lot now i'm gonna give it up to gabriel remember guys this is just the first meeting so it's gonna be very basic we're not we're not here to confuse anybody at all so the next person that you know i would like to give the mic to would be gabriel i connected with gabriel uh via instagram i know that he was um in i am well, one iml now it's i am master academy for a while i think since you know two years ago at least when you were telling me more or less yep. and I've been talking to him a lot. He knows a lot about technical analysis. The man has made a lot of money in the markets. I'm not going to make any income claims because yeah. it's, not, it's not me. That's him. And man, like his goal is just to help people. Like, dude, like when I brought him to this chat, I literally told him, I'm like, look, man, we're not here to sell anything. I want to create a community. I just want to create people to ask questions, to learn together. So, so we can just learn from each other and make money together. So that's his purpose right now. And at the same time, we build our knowledge and then with that knowledge, you guys are able to, to branch, do whatever you guys want to do. Maybe you guys want to become professional traders. Maybe one person starts up a company, uses maybe some person uses that money to start up their own business that has nothing to do with crypto. This information is very valuable. And I just want to emphasize that Gabriel is here to help. And he is an absolute brainiac when it comes to technical analysis. I learned a lot from him. So take the mic, Gabriel. Hey, appreciate it. Appreciate it. I just wanted to tell everybody, you know, happy holidays. You know, for the people that's in this call and that's actually going to be watching it, you know, you guys are basically the 1% out of the 90%, you know, because the majority of people is doing right now is chilling with their families, you know, just saying, you know what, it's it's been a bummy year, you know, I might as well just chill out the crib, you know, and just, you know, go through the days, you know, and the people in this calls, you know, are actually watching and talking about it. You guys are actually going to be on that next level while everybody's going to end up getting into that level when it's later. You got me? So I'm basically going to be talking about Bitcoin and XRP. Uh, not too much of the information of it or the market cap because basically uh, Hudson already explained it too much. So I'm not going to just go, you know, back and forth. So what I am going to talk about is uh, I just wanted to talk about, you know, greed effect. Uh, we got uh, goals, you know, we set a limit, your trading style, Fear of the market. This is what we're in right now. We're in the fear of the market. Uh, everybody's selling. Everybody doesn't know what's going on. You got the big boys here just dumping everything down. Basically, how uh, Bitcoin started uh, back in 20, give me 2017. Bitcoin was going up, 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 up. And next thing you know, it drops down. Everybody was like, oh, you see, it's a scam. It's one of those things where it just hype, 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 and it goes down. But little do you know, that's how the market does. You know, it's like if you go start from zero to 10, it's like a block in each number, each block, 
You get me? So if it goes up to seven, you get me? That's the first number ever hit. It has to reach down to a point to show where the market has a floor. And right now, that's where I'm seeing XRP is doing. It's, it's making this huge floor for what? To buy at the bottom. Because you don't want to keep buying the top. I was at a point where I was going to buy 70 cents per coin. You get me? I could have bought when it was 20 cents. I could have just doubled that within one. Now I have to buy at 70 cents. So those, those, are, those are the times where you got to say, okay, I have to think as institutional instead of a retail. You know, you don't want to buy the hype. You feel me? You want to buy the, the fear. You get me? That's, that's where I want to get at. So if you're not writing this down, you're already missing this. You feel me? So what I'm going to talk about right now, the first is greed effect. We all here came basically in the same field. You get me? In the same uh, lifestyle of growing up, having your mom working at a job, your parents working a job, excuse me, uh, nine to five, going to school. You know, you want good grades. You want this. So we all have that average mindset, you know, and we got to we gotta actually humble ourselves and say, you know, when was the last time I made $200, $500, $1,000 in the last minute, in the last month? Oh, excuse me. No, I want to say in the last minute, in the last hour. Let's be like, let's do it like that. When was the last time you made that much amount of money, excuse me, in that short time of period? Basically, no one has like that. So you have to set yourself a limit saying, hey, if I'm going to come here and to trade, I have to set myself, say, hey, I'm going to trade 30 pips, 40 pips, 50 pips a day, you get me, or per trade, you get me, so I can set myself a limit. Why? Because once you start uh, trading and you have three good trades, those trades gave you $600 each. That's going to tell you, yo, this is a great day. This is a great trade. What happens? You start getting a greed. You start getting that greed effect. And what happens? One trade can eliminate all that. You get me? And that's right there. You got the greed effect. You get me? And that's something right there. You have to tell yourself, hey, I need to set a limit again. I need to set a limit because if not, I'm going to get this greed effect. Because when was the last time you made that amount of money in a short period of time? That's making $600 and, and, and 15 minutes. That's somebody's weekly paycheck. Basically five days you had to wait. Six days you had to wait for $600. I basically covered the uh, set of the limit, which is 20 to 40 pips a day. You know, that's that that right there will really help yourself with greed. I've learned when it comes into the market, especially with cryptocurrency, because we're not going to talk about here for us. We're not going to talk about stocks. So we're going to talk about crypto. Crypto is basically just a greed and fear market. You get I me? Mean? It's it's OK. If a company is saying, hey, we're going to crypto, I mean, we're going to buy XRP. That's a lot of people saying, hey, JP Morgan, that's a big company. If they're going to buy that company, I mean, that token, we're going to say, hey, we're going to put in money in there. You get me? So that's how it actually moves. But what happened to XRP with this suit? Everybody's saying, oh, no, it's fraud. Oh, no, you see? But what happened? It's just started dropping. What happens? Everybody gets out. Everybody's trying to buy. Excuse me. Uh, I just got a phone call, you guys. You guys hear me good? Yeah, bro, loud and clear. Yes, sir. Cool, yes, cool. sir. So, uh, where was I? So, right now, there, there's a shoe that's going on. So, everybody's like, what's going on? You get me? Huston said it already. We're already at, at, at a resistance. So, that's one big signal to tell you, yo, stop buying. You get me? That goes back again. Greed. You get me? You need to stop yourself. If you're getting a greed, go take a walk. You get I me? Mean? Go do something to get yourself out of this trading environment that can get you into greed. Because if when greed gets you into it, you start uh, gambling. We're not here to gamble. You want to go gamble, go to Hard Rock. You get I me? Mean? You're not here to gamble. You're here to set yourself a real limit to have your income coming in at a day. You get I me? Mean? Um, if you have no goals, you get I me? Mean? You're lost. You basically have no G you basically don't have a GPS. So like Hudson said in just the ending is, you know, you might not just want to stick to this forever. You know, you might just want to have enough money where you could just start a business. You get I me? Mean? That's how I tell people this. Like, bro, like trading is not just like the only way to make money. You get I me? Mean? Like how I see it trading is like a vehicle just for money. Money shouldn't be something where you just slave yourself for it. Money should be something where, like, bro, I got money. It's about, yo, I got five buildings. 
You get me? Yo, I got a, I got a business. You feel me? Those are the big boy talks. The money, the tool just to make what you got right here. You get me? So if you want to go ahead and just say, hey, I, I want to just trade, uh, I don't know, twice a week. But that twice a week can make something where somebody can make enough of them. You get me? So that right there, you have to have a goal. You know, like I, I, I was a person, I got into trading uh, back in 20. Yeah, so I'm going to introduce myself with this. So might as well just say it right there. I got into trading in 2016. Excuse me. I've known about trading since 2016. I just got into 2018. You get me? Life was good at, at that time. I just had a little of a goal, but I, I didn't have those those steps. You get me? I was very amateur when it came to trading. So I didn't have those long goals. I only had the big goals. So there's two type of goals here. Let's, let's, let's not forget that. I'm going to have to write this short and big so I could write this let, uh, later. Excuse me. You have to have a short, uh, short-term goal because me, when I started trading and the money I've had, I was yo, I'm going to have a condo. I'm going to have this and this by December. And I started trading March. What happened? I didn't have those small goals in the between to get me where I needed to get there in December. So what are those? Those are risk management. You get me? They don't understand how market structure really works. You get me? You got to understand this is this is the important key because we could talk to you about market this, market that, but if you don't understand the term, short terms that you need to learn how to trade, how are you going to understand and grab all the information at once? You get me? So you got to have a goal and say, hey, why am I trading? You get me? Why am I doing this? Am I learning a new skill? You get me? Am I just doing this for the hype? No, don't do it for the hype. Do it for the long term. Because I don't know about you guys, but this for me is long term. This is not short term. Uh, trading style. You get me? Uh, you have to know what type of trader you want to be. You get me? Uh, I've learned that in trading, it's, it's basically like habits also. You know, whatever you put out in the world, you're going to put it inside of trading. And if you have bad habits, you're not going to do good in trading. Why? Because, again, risk management, money management. If I'm a person that has $1,000 every week coming in and I spend 90% of it, where's my money going? To? You get me? It's going down the drain. Liability. I have no assets. You get me? So it's the same thing with trading. If you're trading with a thousand dollars in your account and you're using a dollar lot size, fifty dollar lot size, fifty cents lot size, you're basically using all your money at once. You get me? So those are things that you have to put in mind when it comes into your goals of trading. What type of trader you want to be? Scalping, those are intraday, those are swing traders, and those are position traders. I think there's one more. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, there's there's one more. It's like an event trader, fundamental, like pure NFP or like pure news. Like yeah, news so traders. Pure, yeah. yeah, no technical. It's just pure fundamental trading. So right now, uh, COVID, um, this is something that I learned and something like I had an insight of, but I've learned and now I can apply to it for 2021 XRP is that when everything dropped, right? All the markets, everybody got out. That's the time when you wanted to sell. Why? Because everybody's getting out COVID. Oh my God, nobody's going to work. There's no money to produce. What's everybody going to do? Everybody's going to cash out what they got in the stock market. And that's the time to sell. You get me? So those are things that you want to look into. Uh, what type of trade do you want to be? Me personally, I've became a, a bearish trader. I like to, I like to trade when everybody's in fear. Why? Because this right here is more of an institutional side or buyer market. So we got the we got the higher high, right? We got the higher low, and then we got a higher high, right? And then we got a higher low. And then we can have all these little noise, right? All these little noise. And then all these little noise. It can consolidate here and it can go all the way up, right? We can here see that the market still went up here, right? What happened here? This, all this noise, all this just takes too long. So what the type of person that I'm in is right here. When everything goes, uh-oh, there's already a signal here that I see. But once we're back up here, now I can say, hey, 
I know there's a resistance right double up top, there. Double top, right? And yes. So right now what I'm looking for, I'm looking for a double top. Now, since I'm already familiar with this type of pattern is before I even say it's a double top, I have to see some type of wicks here. We're going to get later. We're going to go uh, with all the information later on uh, on the topic and uh, the zooms, especially when I have the computer so I can show you guys perfect. So basically what I want to show you is this is the type of bearish market that I like to be in is when I see something like this and then I see this. Right there. Can we not say what this took and this right here? You could see something right here within one day and this right here could have took one month. You get me? So what type of trade I want to be? Me personally, I like to be a bearish. Why? Because something that can take one month can take one day. You get me? So you got to see what type of trader you want to be. You got to see where's your goals. You get me? So like XRP, we've been seeing XRP going up, 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 you know, it's consolidated a little bit, but then it went up and it pushed. What happened? We had a nasty drawdown. We had a nasty drawdown. And right there, we go up here and then it just kept going down, 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 down. You get me? And next thing you know. I hate to interrupt you, but can I ask you to show us a live XRP chart and just give us your, your maybe daily forecast of what's going to happen on a live chart, if you don't mind? Just to add a little bit about what Gabriel said, abundance mindset once more. So when you have an abundance mindset, you're going to have multiple accounts. You're going to have an account that right. you reinvest your profits where you trade bearish. So you can take advantage of that if you know how to do technical analysis. You have right. an account where you're dollar cost averaging. You have another broker where you're just in Bitcoin. And then you use a lot of the profits once you have a lot of money to different things into your personal business. So like Gabriel said, don't think trading is your only income. Because then when you do that, you got to remember all the money invested in the market is not yours. So there's no pressure when it comes to trading. Even if you want to make trading your career, you should just look at it as another source of income. Because that money in the market, once again, is not yours. The market can take it away. Always remember that. I'm showing you guys Bitcoin right now on the weekly. And we can see right here as perfect example. So uh, hold on. Here it is. Right here. So we can see that price was at the lowest right here at 3,222, right? And it went up and then it retested a little bit. So this is where it starts the bullish. So if we put right there, that's telling me a retest. So no retest, no entry. So that right there, it did a retest. So now it's telling me I can enter now. So right here it goes up no retest no entry right happens it retested down there and now i can buy so now we can see that's a floor right there and this is what i'm trying to tell you so if we're looking at the weekly down here this is january 19 i mean excuse me january 28 of 2019 you can see that from that price three thousand let's just go with solid numbers three thousand from 3,000 to 13,000, it took basically six months. From this bearish right here, you can actually see it drops down like this. Look how crazy it drops. So, so from 13 up here, 13 to down here, it took about three months. Let me go on the four hours, see if I can get something more accurate. Let me interrupt for a moment and... Go ahead. These are the cycles I was talking about. With these cycles, you will start to see when Bitcoin is in a downtrend and it starts stabilizing. It is amazing moments to trade out of micro caps, small caps, mid caps, yep. even large caps, because this is all due to Bitcoin dominance. So right now, um, we're looking at this side right here where I just put the, the blue line where you could see that we got a higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. Higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. Now we already know that's a bullish. People are going to be wanting to what happened? Buy up here. This is like XRP. Buying up here, buying the rush when already, this is exactly what I showed you guys in the paper. Here is 
what a double top. I'm already seeing a double top at the at the top. So that right here, I could put. Oh, excuse me. Uh, let me see. Horizontal, right up here. You can see right here. There's a. Let's see, Elliot. So we got one. two, three, and then four neckline. Boom. As you can see right there, I'm sorry guys, if it doesn't look very clear, I'm telling you when I get my computer running or if I get to a computer, you guys will see a lot better. But basically what I'm just trying to show you is that since the market has been going so high up, it needs to breathe. And this is where we get into a PRZ, a price reversal zone. So as you can see, it did a double top on the top of the resistance. Now that's a PRZ, price reversed. And it reversed what? Going down. You see it reversed, went up here, down, up here. So once I already see this making, I wait until this area, I can sell, right? Once it comes down here and I see it starts respecting, it starts respecting right here, breaks. And I'm like, I already know this is gonna be a reverse. Now here's this thing. Once you see a double top, there's always gonna be a pullback. There can be little small uh, pullbacks or it can drop down and be big pullbacks, but they're always gonna go up where it's started at there's always going to be a little piece up here those are the people basically uh buying the dip but in, in in reverse we're selling at the tip of the top so that little piece that people sold they got all the way down here so you have to wait until the market has to retest and usually right here it is and this is where you sell look at this look at this movement right here we got December 18th, 2019 to February 13th. So from February to, to March, you guys see that right there, right? From December. Yeah, we see it. From December 19th, 2019, basically a month and a half. From a bearish, it took quite a, what, a month right here. Right here, this is the selling point. A nice month. So I like a bit more bearish because it just doesn't do all of this movement right here, all this little noise right here. And up, I like it to yo know, get straight to the action. We already know when it comes up like this, it's a pullback and sell to the top, and we're dropping heavy. We're dropping heavy. We're, we're melting, and that's just me. You get me? So going back uh, to finish off where I was at. That's that's trading style. You got to see what type of person you want to be. You want to be a scalper. Scalper is a person that's just in and out the market. You got me a person that says, hey, I wake up at six in the morning. New York sessions already up and running. I'm going to drink myself a coffee. Look at the market real quick. NAS 100, Bitcoin, whatever you want to trade. You trade right there in and out. 15 minutes to an hour and that's it. That's something that can make your morning or your day. You get me? If you're a person to say, hey, I still work a nine to five when I'm so interested in trading. I really want to get this packed down. I want to get to a point where I don't want to quit my job just yet, but I want to at least be a part timer. You get me? I don't want to be 40 hours. I want to be 25 hours just to pay my bills and me. I can start trading more and more and more. You get me? So those are the type of things you got to look at. You want to be a swing trader. You say, hey, I'm coming in into the market with $2,000. You could say, hey, I'm putting $2,000 in the market. I'm using a small amount, about 1% to 3%. I'm going to save 1% for my account. You can swing that. So I just want to finish off with this. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's normal. Uh, I just want to tell you guys this. It's normal. It's normal to lose money. You know, uh, it's part of the game, you know, tech, quote, unquote. If I'm, if I'm making money, somebody on the other side has to be losing money. You get me? You just got to learn why you lost. You feel Earn why you lost the money and just take another day. You know what I mean? I was mad that I didn't keep selling XRP. 
You get me? I'm the bearish guy. I realized I'm a trader like uh, Timothy Sykes. He likes to uh, go for penny stocks, companies that can actually have potential, but there has to have a drawdown. There has to be this just dramatic drawdown to the floor. Any th reasons, any reason, coincidence, and that's how you make your money. You short the market now. You get me? Why? Because it's fast. I mean, fast. But I'm going to end it with this, you guys. Uh, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity to talk with you guys. So, yeah, all you guys, you know. And I want you guys to have a great uh, Christmas. You know, we're going to definitely keep doing this. This is only what? Uh, or 25th, whatever. New Year's is coming up. And this is our first video. This is only the baby steps, all right? So, you guys take care. Back to to hustle. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Gabe. Thank you for that analysis, for your point of views, man. Very valuable, very valuable information. Um, since it's us three, I don't think we're going to have a QA. and a um, <laughs> And, um, man, I'll, I'll edit most of this stuff uh, in, in, like, a couple hours. I'll edit, um, see what parts are, like, the best parts and all that stuff. So right. like, honestly, the parts that that we like that I had a brain fart, that mistakes, all that stuff. Right. Um, I did it. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, facts, facts. So last thing that I want to say is obviously thank you for everybody in the community. Um, thank you, Gabriel, for always adding value to Reek. Everybody else is asking questions, even the people that are silent and don't ask questions. I know they're reading and they're gaining information. This is just the beginning, so don't overwhelm yourselves with information. Take everything we say with a grain of salt and always make your own decisions and do your own research. Never, ever, ever do anything because someone said so. Do it because your mentor said so, but you also did your own research and you did all your due diligence. I agree. DYOR, do your own research. Awesome. Form your own opinions. Stay blessed, guys. Let me know how the, the edit comes out to read before we post it. Thank you so much, guys.